Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to learn how to take the curl of a vector function. Remember, when we take the curl of a vector function, we end up with another vector function. Now, we start out with a very simple example. On the next video, we'll try a little bit more complex example. But notice the function itself, v equals r in the r direction. In other words, it's a function that's radially outwards. So if we were to draw that, here's the origin. You can see that the vector function simply is a function that points radially outward from the origin. And of course, it gets smaller, the magnitude gets smaller and smaller as so we go further and further out. But that's the function we're dealing with. And now we're trying to find the curl of that in spherical coordinates. Now the curl of a vector function that points radially outward, we already know that's going to be equal to zero. All right, we expect the result to be zero. But look at that great long equation. The curl of a vector function in spherical coordinates is something quite daunting. So let's try something nice and easy. Notice though that it's the same mistaking, well, putting it in um, what we call a matrix format, where we have the r, theta, and phi unit vector on the first row, and then we have the cross products and the subtractor from one another. So you can see that here we have uh, theta and phi, here we have r and phi, and here we have r and theta. So that is that goes hand in hand with the matrix format when you think about it. But of course, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Well, let's go ahead and try to work this out. Well, let's first take another closer look at the whole equation. Notice that we only have the r component of the vector. There's no theta and no phi component. And since we're looking for the curl, which is the change in direction away from the radial format, you'd expect that you're going to try to find the change of the theta and the phi components, not so much the r component, because the r components are radially outward, and take a look. So we have the parcel with respect to theta, the parcel with respect to phi. The parcel with respect to phi, oh, here we have the parcel with respect to r, but it's, in the, it's only for the phi component of the vector. And here is the parcel with respect to r, but of the theta component of the vector, and the parcel with respect to theta. So it's all about the change in angle, and that's why we think we're going to get a zero result when we take the curl of that. All right, let's work it out. Again, it might not be a bad idea to look at each part separately otherwise it gets really complicated so let's do it uh, let's do the r part first so what we're going to do is we're going to take the sine of theta times v in the phi direction now that the v component of phi well that's zero so we end up with one over r times the sine of theta times the partial derivative with respect to phi of the sine of theta times the phi component of v, which is going to be 0, minus the partial derivative with respect to phi of the theta component, which is going to be 0. So notice, we take the partial derivative with respect to theta of 0, minus the partial derivative with respect to phi of 0. Go like this. And so therefore, that is equal to zero. And of course, we can't forget the r unit vector. So essentially, no matter what else we have, this is equal to zero in the r direction. All right, now let's do the theta direction. So we have one over r times one over the sine of theta times the partial derivative with respect to phi of the r component of v, well we do have an r component which is r, minus the partial derivative with respect to r of r times the phi component of the vector which is zero. Okay, I need a closing bracket and of course I need my unit vector in the theta direction. Now notice that the partial derivative of r with respect to phi, well that's zero, minus the partial derivative of r of 0 is 0. So again, we have 0 minus 0, or this is equal to 0 in the theta direction. Finally, we're going to do the phi direction. And in the phi direction, we have 1 over r times the partial, and I need a bracket there, right? So I need a bracket times the partial derivative with respect to r of r 
times the theta component of V, which is zero, minus the partial derivative with respect to theta of the R component of the vector, which is equal to R, and that's in the V direction, like that. So again, the partial derivative with respect to R of zero is zero, and the partial derivative of, uh, of R with respect to theta is zero as well, so that means we get zero in the V direction, and so we notice then that if we combine all, the, all of them together, that the curl of this particular vector function is equal to zero because it's a function that goes radially outward from the origin and there's no change in direction, no change in direction meaning the curl has to be zero and that's what we found. So again, it gives you a kind of an easy inroad in how to deal with that big long equation at least on something very simple. Well, let's do another example where the vector function has some sort of angle in it so that we know there's a curl so we get a result other than zero. We'll do that on the next video.